Okay, the last so make sure this is recording. The last section that we're going to talk about is disaggregation and the master schedule. So this is when you're getting down to more of a like what are you going to work on each day um, with the resources that you have. So the aggregate plan gets broken down into the master schedule. So that's the result of breaking it down and it shows the quantity and the timing of specific end items for a schedule horizon. So we're still looking kind of at that horizon, but starting to look at like really um, what are you going to be making? And then um, you can look at marketing capacity planning, production, distribution planning. And this also provides senior management with the ability to determine whether the business plan and its objectives will be achieved. So it's really, um, I still think it's kind of at a high level when you're looking at this. So these are the different periods that you've been looking at, but really they're trying to um, lock up the first three periods and then the middle two periods are going to be a little squishy and still be adjusted. And then this is really open and you don't really have a lot there yet. So where the aggregate plan, you had a little bit more of a definition there in the when you disaggregate and put it into the master schedule, it's just a little bit squishier on the, the end time caps. So your inputs are your inventory, your forecast, and your customer orders. Um, and your outputs are your projected inventory, your master schedule, and uncommitted inventory. Okay. So I apologize, my mouse is killing me. Okay, the master production schedule is one of the primary outputs of the master scheduling process. So once a tentative MPS has been developed, it has to be validated. And that's when it's called, um, it goes through a rough cut capacity planning. And that's a tool used in the validation process. So it's really looking at balancing capacity and demand to test the feasibility of the master schedule. So this involves checking the capacities of production facilities, labor, vendors, all of those things, and making sure that there's no big issues. So looking at forecasts and customer orders, this is looking at our beginning inventory 64, our forecast is 30, um, and we have 33 committed orders. So this is looking at committed orders. You can see as we get further out, there's less definition in this process. There isn't as many, and this is what we're forecasting to have. Um, as we go. So we have three over what we forecasted here. Um, we're 10 under for the second period and 20 under for the third period right now. So this is kind of our known variables. So then what you do is you're going to look at that forecast and that beginning inventory and you're going to take the beginning inventory, subtract it from your committed orders and your projected on hand will be 31. Okay. And then you're going to take that and subtract it from um, the forecast because the forecast is larger than the committed orders. So then you're going to have one on hand. So you don't have all your orders in, so you're just going to go after the forecast for the second period. Okay. Same with um, the third period. So your forecast is larger than the customer orders in week, week three. So then you're going to take your 30, you have one on hand, and you're going to be short 30. So that kind of lets you know projected on hand and where you're going to be. This is just using your beginning inventory. Okay. So if you're looking at your master production schedule and you're projected on hand, um, this is going to look at, it kind of breaks it out for you so you can see. So this is inventory from the previous week, this is the requirements, and this is inventory before um, master production schedule. So our projected inventory is going to be 31, our projected inventory is 1. So in our master product, pro, um, <laughs> production schedule, we're now going to be making 70. Um, in week three, so that will give us 41 inventory, and then we take our inventory forecast, and we have got 11, and then I moved it. Um, and then you subtract that, and you've got one left, um, and so you've got 70, so you've got 41 here, you've got another 40, so you're just kind of carrying it over is really what you're doing. So basically what you're saying is that all of these periods are when you're going to build um, based on your forecast and when you need to build. So you're, you're going to produce in period three, you're going to produce in period five, you're going to produce in period seven and eight to handle the forecast or your committed orders. In this case, your committed orders are higher, so that's what you're actually looking at. In all of the rest of the cases, your forecast is higher, so you're going off of the higher um, numbers to calculate your projected on hand and then how much you need to build. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to look at your available to promise inventory, so you're uncommitted. So you've got 11 left here, um, and then you've got 20 committed orders, so then you've got one left over, so you've got 70 that you make, 
Um, and then you had 30, so um, you're gonna take that and work it down to 56, so you're looking at your 10 and your four. You're kind of forecasting in a little bit in advance, and that's how you're getting some of these numbers. So um, your committed orders are really what you're looking at here to get to this available to promise inventory. So um, in two week periods, I've got 53, and I had 64, so that's gonna give us 11 here between the two. Um, and then here I'm looking at two weeks, 14 for these two periods. Um, that's committed. I've now made 70, so from that I've got 56 available to promise. So above and beyond that, I've got 56 left over. So you're kind of looking at what you have left over beyond what you've committed to already. So that's that available to promise inventory, okay? So that being said, um, the spreadsheet also has a master scheduling model too. So if you want to take a look at the problems and figure that out, you can use this template to put in your uh, master production schedule and your committed orders, and it'll calculate everything in white. Okay, so that's there for you to work through as well. And that's the master schedule. So really the master schedule is helping you look at um, what when you're going to have to produce and looking at it more, um, more broken down. So if I was looking at this, um, let me go back to my PowerPoint. Not the right chapter. All right, so if I go back down here, um, I'm actually, this one's probably less confusing. If I'm just looking at this, I can see where I'm going to start running out of inventory and when I need to produce, right? And so this is where I'm developing my master production schedule. So this, uh, otherwise this is just forecasted orders. These are your periods. This is breaking down your periods to what you're forecasting each week. And then this is where you think you're gonna to have to build. So let's say you had cars. Um, you're not gonna build the same line of cars every day. So you're gonna build them on different times this way you can kind of predict when you need to build them as an example. Maybe you do build them every day, but that will help you create that master schedule. So the master production schedule is really when you're producing. Um, all of the other things are inputs to help you decide that. I hope that makes sense um, and have a great week.